Quite an intro. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous because I came here, I actually have a confession to make, and I thought maybe this is a good crowd to come clean to. Um, I'm a fashion victim. <laughs> I am, it's an issue, it's been ruling my life for the last decades. And as Denise mentioned before, I've been hearing everywhere that it's very trendy to be queer. So I just had to do it, <laughs> you know. And, you know, hear me out. Like I grew up reading Vogue and watching Sex and the City. For those of you who are not familiar, Sex and the City is just like the L word, but for straight women. <laughs> and, um, you know, I couldn't let the trend pass me by. Like, I also always have this inner French snob talking in my head who's like, but uh, Cherie, uh, being hetero is so 2015. Uh, <laughs> maybe you've been living in Austria for too long, but uh, you know, we never put comfort over style. <laughs> so, you know, I, could, I tried to suppress her for a while, but uh, eventually I just, I, had to, I just had to do it. I had to come out. And I really do feel victimized, you know, the emotional intelligence of your partners, the like hot and supportive community, the multiple orgasms. I mean, <laughs> it's truly a curse, you know, but I sacrifice myself every day for fashion. <laughs> You're welcome. And as, you know, as somebody who came out later in life, like uniquely for style purposes, of course, <laughs> I'm often quite intimidated by those who always knew that they were queer. You know, I don't know if you've ever had the glorious experience of a butch person showing you their baby butch photos. <laughs> it's equally like super adorable and immensely pressurizing, you know? <laughs> and it usually goes something like this, they're like, Look, I was born a dyke, you know? <laughs> like, I came out of the womb with a carabiner in my hand, you know? I was ready to latch onto the world, you know? <laughs> or they're like, look, that's me at age one. I'm crawling around in carab diapers. <laughs> Here, me at age seven. I'm wearing my favorite dress of all times. It's made out of flannel, you know, and just... <laughs> And, you know, for me, it's completely unrelatable because as a fan baby, you know, no one saw it coming, like not even myself. Uh, you know, there's this video of my boyfriend as a butch baby and it's Easter. So he's like, you know, looking for, he for eggs, like his life depends on it, moving around the garden like a miniature lumberjack, you know. <laughs> and like in the only video of myself as a child, I'm wearing a golden princess dress. And I'm walking down the stairs, so I'm holding my dress like a lady, <laughs> you know? And I have a crown on my head, and I'm waving at imaginary plebeians who must have come here to worship their queen, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> slightly different vibe, you know? <laughs> but you know, it's hard, like sometimes as a femme person, like you want to be perceived a little gayer, or just like a little gay, <laughs> or just being perceived at all is good enough, you know? So you just like, you know, you dust off your chunkiest silver chains, you know, you chop off your acrylics, you don't need that. And then you, for once in your life, you put on a baggy t-shirt, you know? And then you look at yourself in the mirror, and the next thing you do is that you take a little picture and you send it to, in my case, my other little fan friend, Vesa, and we're like, <laughs> Look, I'm having such a butch day. You know? <laughs> we try, you know, we try because butch is a hot, but this is probably not in the cards for me. That's fine. Um, another aesthetic ideal that is probably not gonna happen for me is to be a sleek queer. Um, you know who I'm talking about. The sleek queers are mysterious aerodynamic people who can weather, they can wear leather pants without sweating, <laughs> you know? And they also don't make any like awkward squeaky noise, you know? They just hover through the crowd. 
You know, and as they glide into the room, they're only followed by a cloud of cum de garçon fragrance. <laughs> you, know? you know, their hair is gel, their eyebrows are bleached, and they might be vampires, but we're all too afraid to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they're so cool, they're basically breathing refrigerators. You know, it's impossible to hold up to this standard. Like, at any given moment, they look like it, they just stepped out of a movie set from The Matrix you know, to like grace us with their immaculate presence and judge silently from a corner with perfect lighting. You know? <laughs> Myself, on the other hand, I always look like I stepped out of a movie set from the Teletubbies, you know? <laughs> Me and my little, you know, neon alien friends, you know, we're like dancing on, you know, plastic fake grass, wearing rainbow color fur coats, you know, like they live in the future, I live in a circus, we are not the same, you know. <laughs> and, you know and I try to be sleek and mysterious and s even sultry, uh, but my problem is that I cannot stop talking for more than five minutes. <laughs> And if I do, I usually realize that, like, you know, I have a little bit of toothpaste on the only, like, <laughs> black t-shirt I own, which also happens to be my butch baggy t-shirt, you know? It's like <laughs> and, you know, that's okay. Like, you know, like, certain things are just not for me, and that's fine. Like, my favorite dress is not made out of flannel. It's not lime green vegan leather designed by some nice Scandinavian person, <laughs> you know? My favorite dress is pink polyester and it makes me look like a human piñata and that's <laughs> fine you know <laughs> I don't wear fragrance you know I wear a cheap body spray from Lush called let the good times roll <laughs> <laughs> it smells like vanilla popcorn you know <laughs> and you know it's fine you know what they say like gender is a performance and mine is a children experimental puppet show you know <laughs> And that's okay, you know, because I like to think of myself as more of a role play dresser, anyhow. You know, like to invent little characters for myself, so you're not stuck in one aesthetic particularly. So, for example, today I went with Slutty Schoolgirl, a classic, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Tomorrow I could reinvent myself into something completely different, like a slutty secretary, <laughs> you know. Or, you know, like, I don't know, another day I could be slutty gender studies professor from the 70s. <laughs> you know, just switch things up. <laughs> uh, broaden your horizon, be a slutty gay dad on a hike, you know. Or an all-time favorite, slutty Victorian lesbian painter, you know. <laughs> just always dress for the job you want, not the job you have. That's it. <laughs> Thank you.